Monsieur Seymour. A Scottish detective from the Scotland Yard investigated Monsieur Bosu's death in Morocco. Monsieur Bosu. A French businessman working in Tangier, Morocco. While in pursuit of a wild pig in a pig sticking event, Monsieur Bosu falls off of his horse. When a group of people goes to see if Bosu is safe and uninjured, they find his dead body with a lance through the back of it. Pig sticking is a dangerous and difficult but exciting sport in Morocco, especially in Tangier. Before the hunt, three or four men form a team and drive the pig out of his lair in the jungle. Surprisingly, the pig can outrun the horse for the first three quarters of a mile. After that, the horse catches up and the men can stick the pig. The man or men who stick the pig are honored after the hunt. In the midst of the investigation, France develops Morocco, a French protectorate which causes diversity and tension. Although many challenges face Seymour, he is able to push through and solve the case. Who killed Bosu? Stealthy hunters and unparalleled predators. In the novel No Longer at Ease by Chinua Achebe, the reader is brought on the eventful journey of our young protagonist, Obi Okonkwo. He is the grandson of the famous Okonkwo from the previous book in the series called Things Fall Apart. The story takes place in the town of Lagos, in the southern part of Nigeria. This is where Obi Okonkwo is faced with many choices, family or girlfriend, job or family, and traditional culture or modern day culture. He is forced to choose between what his ancestors were taught and what he was taught. These choices revolve about him receiving the scholarship to study in England. The scholarship is given to the best student in a certain grade. Once finished with school in England, the student who receives the scholarship is forced to repay the 800 pounds. The 800 pounds is the money that was taxed from the Umufian people for the initial scholarship. Yet, the scholarship choices are not always to the rightful people because the civil service workers usually receive bribes to sway the vote. This is a major problem because sometimes the scholarship is awarded to the wrong person. Was Obi the right choice for the scholarship? Will he be able to repay the scholarship? Will he succeed? Or will he fail? Find out by reading No Longer at Ease by Chinua Achebe. In the Company of Cheerful Ladies by Alexander McCall Smith. And Gabaroon Matswana, Mama Ramatswe, is the detective in town. But lately, she's had many problems and mysteries turn up. Alexander Smith's uses of humor and intensity develop fear, anxiety, and excitement in different points of the novel. Mama Ramatswe deals with dangerous obstacles in her everyday life, not only with her job, but also in her personal life. An intruder in her house and her abusive ex-husband returning are two major problems that intrigue and worry her. Finding a belonging has been stolen upsets Mamara Matsue, but ends up benefiting her. Mamara Matsue has many different adventures and situations. The reader will be packing their bags to head off to Botswana when they finish this book. Read the whole series. It's called The Number One Ladies Detective Agency. Miss Skinner, niece of the possible next president of the United States, arrives in Cairo, Egypt in 1908 on a mission to stop the exportation 
of ar Egyptian artifacts. Miss Skinner is met by member of the Mamerzat police, Owen, and the porter, Paul Trevelyan. Trouble seems to find Miss Skinner wherever she goes. The first day Miss Skinner arrives in Cairo, she is pushed in front of the tram and nearly killed. Luckily, she survives and is unharmed. But now, it's Owen's job to find out who pushed Miss Skinner and why. Visiting many new places, meeting many new people, and dealing with the attitude of Miss Skinner, Owen's journey to find the truth is a long, intense, and sometimes funny one. When Owen finally is close to the truth, he finds something he never would have guessed. With the help of people he meets on the way, and clues he gathers himself, he finally comes to the source of all the attacks, danger, and the problem Miss Skinner came for, the source of the artifacts being exported out of Egypt. This mystery ends with a boom and leaves the reader wanting to visit the mysterious and ancient Egypt.
Talking food in Africa, table etiquette practically resembles table etiquette in the United States. Always be polite and chew with your mouth closed when while eating. But also be very cautious because one of the main distinctions from African table etiquette is that Africans will usually place items on the table that are not meant to be eaten and are sometimes even deadly. Locals assume that, get, that a guest would know not to come into contact with these items. Researching the culture and specific areas you will be visiting is a good idea to make sure you are learning each of the tribal traditions the area holds. Using the information gathered and the information in this video, locals will be stunned by your ability to connect with a diverse culture like their own. Brian. And I'm Mr. Bomber. And we'd like to thank you for tuning in on the Good Morning Africa show today. But uh, before we leave, we'd like to share with you some of our current event stories in Africa. Uh, first, we're going to set it down to Zimbabwe, where Alexander is covering some live stories. What are the details, Alexander? Thank you, Will, for the intro. Today, we learned about five great books, what the six must do and must seize in Africa, and some influential people in Africa. Yeah, I messed up. I'm sorry. Go ahead and like, go back and forth. Are we... <laughs> 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 I can't stop! <laughs> oh my god, you <laughs> Stop the tank, stop! <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Kevin.